Okay, hello everybody. Um, Emma, can you just let me know that you can hear and see me okay? Yep, I can see you and hear you okay. Okay, great. Okay, then I'll uh, then I'll start. So, um, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody, um, wherever you are uh, in the world. Um, I'm presenting to you today from the United Kingdom, so it's a, a dull afternoon here, but the, the sun has just come out. So, um, yeah, th welcome to this um, uh, webinar. Um, it's part of our TPR webinar series, um, and you'll be able to access all the preceding uh, webinars and the future webinars um, on our website at some stage in the future. But um, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, Shoreline Cleanup Assessment Technique, or SCAT. So just a little bit about myself. Um, my name's Rob. I've been at uh, OSRL for about 19 and a half years now. I've got a background in marine biology uh, with a PhD in marine ecotoxicology, so effects of oil on uh, marine habitats, etc. Um, and I've got a genuine interest in shoreline response. Um, and I was lucky enough to be um, involved with the Deepwater Horizon um, incident back in 2010 uh, under the auspices of uh, Dr. Ed Owens, who um, is one of the uh, founding fathers of, of SCAT. So uh, everything I've learned, I've got from Ed and uh, some of the materials and, and quotes within this presentation also come from Ed. So just a little bit of context in terms of this um, TPR uh, series. Um, hopefully you'll have uh, you'll be um, familiar with this uh, TPR wheel. Uh, which is um, a tool that we use for defining sort of response uh, capability. And one of the um, uh, critical elements of this of this wheel is is for us to identify response capability at different tier levels. Um, I'm not going to go into that today because there's a whole different presentation on that. But what we're interested in is is in this particular segment of response capability. The uh, shoreline and inland uh, assessment so that the the, uh, the scat um, techniques that we that we uh, use so um, to put this into context you've got um, oil on a shoreline um, or oil is um, threatening to impact a shoreline um, as responders where do we start what do we do how do we um, decide what we're going to do um, in terms of cleanup, how we're going to do that, what might be impacted, um, and all those those things. And these are the kind of questions and demands that we put on us as shoreline uh, responders from the very uh, first day of a of a response. So, um, if we are tasked with carrying out this shoreline cleanup assessment technique which are essentially surveys of uh, shorelines and beaches that potentially could be impacted or are already impacted, um, just like in this picture here. Um, and we need to have a, a process, a survey technique um, to do that, to provide information to um, the wider response management um, function. And that's what basically SCAT is. So um, moving on. So what essentially what is SCAT? Um, at its heart, it's a survey technique. It's a survey technique for recording what kind of shorelines we're dealing with and how much oil is on those shorelines, where that what type of oil it is, um, and what's the sort of breadth of that oil impact potentially on those on those particular environments. So um, it's a standardized procedure that's been used um, or is used worldwide. Um, in lots of different countries, but it was originally um, developed uh, way back uh, during the um, Exxon Valdez uh, spill. That's where it first started being used. And I said before, um, uh, Ed Owens was one of the first people to, to, to bring this to the to the to the wider um, sort of response uh, world. Um, so there are various field guides. There's a picture here of the OSRL field guide for, for SCAT, um, and you'll find these um, these field guides um, in various places around the world, um, but they all have the same thing inside. So, you know, I've got the um, the, the field guide here for, for, for OSRL, 
and there's one another one here I've got for uh, for Canada um, for environment uh, and climate change Canada but everything inside them is just the, is the same we use the same uh, techniques and process the good thing about uh, SCAT is it's adaptable and scalable depending on the size of the spill and the objectives of the response techniques um, you might have a small spill with just a few number of people that can that can survey many parts of the coastline in in a one in one day, or you might be up to the the large scale incidents like we had in Deepwater Horizon, where you need lots of different people. So, one of the good things it is is adaptable and scalable to that in that respect. Depending where where you are in the world, there might be multiple stakeholders within those individual SCAT teams that are going out on a uh, a, a daily basis to carry out these these surveys and repeat surveys of various parts of the shoreline um, and in some parts of the world those scat the, the composition of those scat teams is is fairly uh, rigid and mandated um, so it really depends on where you are in the world who might be in those teams um, and what we're doing there um, as part of those surveys is collecting data essentially because um, without data we just all be guessing we'll be would be we wouldn't have a clue what's going on we're defining and documenting the location of the the oil the scale and character of that oil, the types of shoreline that the oil has impacted or could impact. And, and we're also looking at any operational uh, constraints. Um, it's really important that um, as we're going out and doing these SCAT surveys, we're thinking about how the operational response cleanup teams will be able to operate and we'll be able to access those parts of the shoreline. And in some cases, um, we might be able to do a survey but the, we would we would struggle to get um, mechanical type recovery equipment to those beaches. So um, as as the as we're doing these surveys, we need to be mindful of that. As also as part of these these this SCAT function, we we will be recommending uh, where certain areas of the, of the shoreline will be prioritised for, for for treatment and for for cleanup, and that's based on the knowledge and experience of people within these SCAT teams. Um, once we well, as we're collecting this data, clearly it has to be done in a systematic and accurate and consistent way. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in, in the next few slides. So moving on, why do we actually want to, to carry out these, uh, these SCAT surveys? And there's a number of uh, different reasons which I've uh, highlighted a few of them here on the slide here. Um, it provides situational awareness to um, the higher response teams, the, the environment units, the command centre, emergency operations centre, we're basically as the as the SCAT um, teams with the eyes and ears of planning and operations. And um, hopefully if you've seen the one of the other TPR webinar uh, series, someone will have talked about incident command and incident management. And so we're providing the eyes and ears of what's going on on those beaches um, to lots of different people. So. Um, that's why during a large spill, um, SCAT information is is in is in high demand from lots of different people in the uh, in in the, in the response. It also allows us um, or allows sort of operations and logistics. Once we've made some recommendations on which uh, areas should be pre treated as priority, then you can do uh, effective and efficient planning of shoreline assets. So you know where you're going to send people and equipment as a priority. Also, the data that we're collecting as part of these shoreline surveys helps us to set objectives, priorities, and more importantly, endpoints on where we um, where we might stop cleaning a particular type of, of beach. So that really does help us. And without these cleanup teams, um, you know, sorry, without these these SCAT teams, we would we um, some of the cleanup some of the cleanup teams would be having to make you know on the spot decisions. There, there's nothing to base those uh, those decisions on. So you might get over or under utilization resources. Um, people might be going to the wrong sites, you know, that don't need cleaning, you know, or they might be carrying out um, treatment uh, techniques and cleanup te techniques that potentially provide uh, provide doing more harm than good. So that's where things like uh, net environmental benefit assessments so need would come in. So, yeah. So that's why we, we we really do need SCAT. There's a lot of other reasons, but we, we don't have a lot of time today. One of the um, critical things that we do as part of the uh, shoreline response program and part of this, this SCAT function is we have to have these operational working units along the shoreline and the coastline um, that we're working on. And that's where we we uh, we 
define and, and or, or segregate the shoreline into these uh, segments. So it's called shoreline segmentation. And then each segment, um, which typically range from sort of uh, 200 to 2 meters to about two kilometers, um, they uh, are assigned a code. Um, so as an example here from Eagle Island, you can see E1, E2, etc. Um, they then provide a, a working unit. So everybody is really clear on, you know, that they're working, that they're referring to a specific part of the shoreline and not just saying, oh, we're going to Red Wolf Bay today or we're going to Chem Ice Bay today. Everybody knows what that number is and they met because they may not know where Red Wolf Bay is or uh, or, 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 um, or any other type of um, uh, name. So yeah, um, and within those, um, what defines those segments is usually have the same sort of physical features and sediment type within them. So for example, on this picture here, you can see, um, hopefully there's a, you know, there's a very long sort of sandy shoreline here, which ends in uh, a, a small um, uh, headland just here. So that's where the segment boundary might be, uh, might be put. So segment boundaries can be put at sort of river mouths and, um, where sediment type changes or at headlands, etc. Um, so that's um, that's really important. That we do this segmentation. Um, we try to do that before we actually go on a spill, and we can use um, Google Earth and various other sources of uh, of information to to put in those boundaries. So moving on in terms of the SCAT process. Um, so hopefully you can see on this slide here, um, for me it's a little bit blurred, but I'm hoping it's quite clear for everybody else um, on, on the, on the uh, webinar here. But what you can see um, is once you have the oil spill, um, there's a number of uh, things that need to be need to be carried out. So where we do where we in terms of these shoreline surveys that we're carrying out, we use a form or we use an app, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. We carry out these shoreline surveys using a, uh, an oil shoreline assessment form. Um, if we don't see any oil, um, when that that's good news, and we can hopefully then go through this sort of sign off process through this um, SIR. Uh, um, process here where we can where we can sign that that particular segment or segments of shoreline off. But if we do find oil, then we obviously have to advise on what we're going to do on that uh, particular segment or segments. Um, and that's where this thing called the shoreline treatment recommendation process comes in into play. So these STRs. So the shoreline, sorry, the SCAT teams will go out, do their surveys. If they see oil and it requires cleanup, um, they'll produce these STRs, which are in effect like work orders for the operation cleanup teams that can then come in, um, do their work, and then repeat surveys are carried out once the operations folks have done their bit. Um, if they meet the certain criteria that has been set for, for cleaning up that beach, which is what's called an endpoint, um, then that's great because the, um, the that particular segment and segments can then be can then be uh, signed off again through this SIR segment inspection report process. So there is a, a very clearly defined um, sort of process that we use in shoreline uh, response programs and, and the SCAT process. And that's where the SCAT teams really uh, do provide their, their, um, their knowledge and expertise in driving this forwards using these, these sort of standard techniques. Um, so we usually carry this out, uh, these surveys with a with a paper based form and have done for many years. But in this digital world that we're now living in um, here at OSRL, we've we've uh, we have developed and are continually to develop a uh, an app based um, SCAT survey process that uh, my colleague uh, Liam has been working on for a few years now. So that's a, a an operational tool that we use on, on most of our spills these days. So when you're out uh, in the field as a uh, in, in a SCAT team, you're going to need a number of things to um, to carry out your duties for the day. Um, clearly, you're going to have to have your um, your field guide because no, nobody, no matter how long they've been doing this, will remember everything in there. So always good to, to have that with you. You've got to have your, your uh, little notebook. So we have these waterproof notebooks that we take out to the field to make notes. Um, if we're doing it the old school way, we'll have a form or if not, um, uh, if, if we're using our app, then we'll use our we'll use our phones or we'll use um, a, a ruggedized tablet 
um, that we have. We have a few ruggedized tablets at OSRL that we can use um, to carry out those surveys. Um, it's got a picture of a shovel here because, um, as you may know, on certain types of shoreline, the oil can get buried. So in sort of sandy and muddy type shorelines, um, oil can get buried on, on, on subsequent uh, tides. So we need some kind of method of digging pits um, to look for subsurface oil, um, and that's really important. Um, and obviously a camera or other means to take take a picture. Scale bar um, is always very important if you're taking pictures as well. And on the back of our our um, field guide here, we have a we have a already have a our own little scale bar. And a lot of field guides as well. For example, the OS Rail one also has a, a scale bar. So that's really important. So that's sort of basic kit um, as well as your sort of your own personal personal equip, uh, equipment that you'll need to take out with you. So I talked about this uh, this form that is critical to 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 SCAT. Um, has been for a number of years. Um, it's a standard template. We we at OSRL call it an oil shoreline assessment form or OSA form, but traditionally it is called a shoreline oiling summary form or, or SOS. Um, it's a standard template. It has eight sort of sections to it. You can get different versions for different shoreline types. It is fundamental to what we do um, because the the wherever you are, uh, whatever um, you, you whichever sort of uh, uh, forms you're using, uh, whoever if, if it's the OSRL form or the Canada form or um, wherever in the world, um, then the sections remain the same. So you get that uniformity, consistency, etc., um, and that that's filled in on a on in, in all the segments as we're uh, as we're working through. And the um, I haven't got time to go into great detail on the form, but this sort of general information at the top here, we talk, you then tick what kind of shoreline type it is. If you're seeing any oil, what kind of oil you're seeing, um, you know, any operational constraints and features for access you put in there. You're then recording, sorry, the surface oil um, characteristics. If there is oil there, you're looking at the type, um, the distribution and the thickness of that that oil and and the little field guides that we use go into into more detail with that um, with some great aid memoirs. Um, what we're what we're trying to produce here at the end of the day is these uh, visual maps, and this one is is courtesy of, uh, of Deepwater Horizon work. So what we're trying to do with with collecting this data is you can then put it into a uh, a matrix, different types of matrices, depending on what the sort of the, the, the extent of the oiling and the and the and the thickness and the distribution. And you can produce these sort of uh, color coded heat maps where blue means no oil observed. So that means someone's been out and you know, no oil no oil has been been observed. Right up to sort of the, the red marks which um, talk about heavy oiling. And you've got sort of yellow and green which are sort of medium and light oiling. So uh, as you can imagine, if you're just uh, looking at the data produced in a form, that's really um, the raw data. What we really want is for that raw data to be produced into these um, these uh, sort of um, the, these color coded um, maps. And that then helps for us to know on a daily basis, because obviously this will change on a daily basis as more oil hits the shoreline or the operational teams are cleaning up. This this will change on a, on a daily basis, and we we now have the capability at OSRL to not only carry the surveys out on our phone on our app, but then we can produce these automatically from the data that's coming into that app um, in a much quicker time than we would do historically if we were doing um, this manually. So these these kind of this kind of output is critical to this to the SCAP function. And here's another one here from the Costco Busan. Again, this is courtesy of, uh, of Ed Owens. Thanks, Ed, for that. And again, you can see um, no oil observed is blue and uh, green and yellow are very light and light and going up to the heavy, heavy uh, parts of the shoreline that um, that you can see here in red. So it gives you a, you know, an instant um, and daily uh, record of what the state of shoreline oiling and the segments are that, that require um, some attention. So um, we haven't got a lot of time today, 
um, because I want to leave some time for some questions, but I, I just wanted to give you a very short overview of what, what SCAT is. And, you know, you can contact me and here at OSRL if you want to know more. And traditionally, we do a sort of two, three day course on this where 50 percent of the uh, courses um, in the classroom in theory and the other half is on in in the field where we really get to grips with doing these surveys. So basically, in summary, um, SCAT is a decision support for shoreline treatment planning and operations throughout a response. So, so the SCAT function could be carrying out um, its duties way beyond um, some of the activities that, that may have ceased during, uh, um, let's say, a marine spill where we've been carrying out uh, dispersant operations offshore. Those kind of operations may have um, and probably have, have ceased after a, a few days, depending on the scale of the incident. But the, the SCAP surveys and, and the shoreline surveys could be carried on for weeks, if months, maybe even years after uh, an incident. So systematic surveys uh, are really um, the heart of what SCAT is. We divide the shoreline into these, these working units, into these segments. We use standardised terms and definitions that are in all these field guides. We're usually using lots of different personnel in, the, in these teams, could be up four or five people in, in these teams. Um, and one of the, some of the critical things um, that hopefully um, I've got across in the last uh, 15, 20 minutes is, you know, in terms of what SCAT does for its management and operational uh, aspects. So, you know, in terms of the operational priorities, what what to do, what's to do first, which, which parts of the shoreline take priority, how are we going to do it? So the, the, the most appropriate treatment and cleanup techniques. Endpoint criteria. So this is actually, you know, really critical on, on how we decide when, when, how clean is clean and where we stop. Because cleaning a shoreline, um, you can do more harm than good if you if you get go beyond a certain uh, point, depending on that, that particular shoreline. Sometimes it's best to remove bulk oil and depending on the characteristics of that shoreline, you then leave... Um, natural processes to to carry out the rest of it. If you carry it on, you may do more harm than good. And then there's a sign off process. That's a critical thing that SCAT uh, delivers in terms of signing off these these uh, segments and how we assess those are those are complete. So um, in terms of this field guide that I've been uh, waving around, the OSRL one, you can download that off our website. It's free. Um, just need to, to search for it under, under the technical library and field guides. And it's a number, it's one of, a, oh, I think there's about 10 or 12 different field guides we have on there for all sorts of different response techniques. So have a look at that. Um, I would also urge you to go and look at the uh, uh, IOGP IPCA documents that are, that are currently housed on the IPCA website, so IPCA.org. And there's a fantastic um, document there that talks about uh, SCAT surveys and a, and, and, a, and a good overview of what SCAT is. And also, quite recently, in the last year or so, there's this new one that's come out called um, the Shoreline Response Programme, or the SRP. And this really does um, put SCAT into context of a shoreline response uh, programme. Um, Shoreline response program is basically the way that we manage shorelines on a holistic basis during a spill and, and the SCAT surveys just provide the data that helps to drive that shoreline response program forwards and, and integrates it into a much better uh, uh, way in the incident command um, system. So yeah, um, I'll leave it there because I've noticed um, I've come up to sort of 24 minutes past the hour. Um, and if anybody's got any questions either now or if you want to drop me a, uh, uh, an email um, on robholland at allspillresponse.com, more than happy to, to help out uh, with any questions. But say um, we can carry out these SCAT courses um, all over the world for anyone who would like to know more. We can do it virtually, but ideally we'd like to do it in person so we could get out on the beach and, and, and do that. Uh, so, yeah, I'll pause there, Emma, and see if there's any questions i can't see any in the chat myself uh, but if anybody's got any questions please um please put it in the text or just, or just unmike your mute if you uh you unmute your mic if that's possible i'm not sure you can do that on these webinars so i'm not seeing um any questions um so i shall 
uh, stop there and just thank. Oh, I, I've got a question. Sorry. Uh, thank you very much. Trying to get the link between SLP and the SCAT tasks and prioritizations. Are there any good examples um, that can be shared? Um, I can. Um, what I'll do is uh, if you could just I can't go into detail on here because um, I don't have time, but if you could please get in touch with me on my email, um, I'd be more than happy to to go through that. But suffice to say that during Deepwater Horizon, BP uh, and Richard Santner and, and those guys there in, in the command centre realised that, you know, the shoreline response programme was was the way forwards to integrate uh, shoreline response more into into the wider uh, response efforts um so that that has helped so yeah uh in question here from rob jones um i know it depends on the size of the release and impact but how many scat personnel can osrl provide in in an incident okay so as part of our service level agreement that we have with um osrl members we can provide 18 people um in the in a first response so that if necessary, we could provide that full 18 people just for SCAP, but we usually are doing other jobs as well. But um, yeah, we can provide 18 in exceptional circumstances and with um, approval from, from our board members, we can provide more, but that's the base number is 18. Uh, someone's asking for my email. I think Emma's put it in there. Uh, here, please, how can we get these lecture materials? Um, I know that the webinar is going to be released. Um, I'm not sure whether there's going to be PDFs. Oh, here we go. Emma's just told me the recording and the slides will be shared early next week. So you'll, you will get copies of these uh, these slides. But, um, you know, please reach out to me on an on a individual basis if you need any more help. Okay. I mean, please share this recording around once, once it's uploaded. You can share it with, within your organisation. Um, and I think, uh, like I said at the start, there's going to be um, a whole series of these. Um, when to start SCAT during an oil spill? From the very beginning, when all already reaches shoreline. OK, so good question. As soon as you have an incident and you have an inclination or an idea that shorelines may be impacted, that's the time to start doing SCAT. Um, get out to the beaches and and go and start surveying them um it may be that there's some beaches have lots of um debris and litter on them and the scat surveys will will uh, record that um and it could be um an idea to clear those beaches before they get oil so then you reduce the amount of waste so that's clearly a uh, you know an advantage of having scat uh here's a question here oh sorry um Pre-SCAT could provide a baseline before those reach the shore. Absolutely, yes. Thanks, Pierre. Yeah, hope you're doing okay. Um, what's the most appropriate way of categorizing an spill into tier one, two, and three? Is it based on quantity discharge or response equipment? Please elaborate on this. Okay, I don't have time to do today, but the old way of categorizing all spills, tier one, two, and two, and three, according to their size, has gone now. We now use um, it's all down to response capability. So I could if. I would uh, recommend that you go onto the IPCA website that I talked about earlier, look at the oil spill so the resources end and look up tiered preparedness and response. And there is a webinar that um, my colleague Andy Nickel presented in this series, which which overlies that or, or talks to it. So it's all about response capability. And, it, and it's really that wheel that I showed at the start of this this webinar. So hopefully that that helps. Um, what I will do is just show that wheel again. I'm not going to go over it, but this is what you're looking for um, when you want to learn more about it. It's this tier preparedness and response wheel. And I say that there's more information on the IPCA website. So not seeing any more questions and I've got about a minute to go because this is a 30 minute webinar. Um, oh, someone's got their hand up. Uh, wait a minute, I've got, so I think the hand up went first, and I think that was from Alex. Um, Alex, if you can unmute your mic, if not, put it in the, uh, put it in the chat if you can. Um, in the meantime, Dario said, traditionally SCAT, the teams belong to planning section. Uh, yeah, that's right. 
is that OK? Uh, <laughs> it's worked for many years. Um, and the shoreline response program and that that document I talked talk to you about um, earlier will, goes into a bit more detail on that. It, it's worked that way, um, but it does need to be integrated more. And we, during uh, deep water rise and on subsequent subsequent spills, we've had this function called SCAT ops liaison, which is the the link between SCAT function and operational um, teams. And essentially, that's just one or two people who are called SCAT Ops Liaison, and their, their role is to go out into the field using the, 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 the SCAT information and the STRs that have been produced and to make sure that um, the operational teams really understand what's in that STR and can um, uh, uh, carry out what's, what's uh, required um, and recommend in an STR in, in terms of what it means for an operation cleanup. Um, someone's asking for my email address. Yeah, Emma's done that. Uh, Mike's are muted. OK. So. Um, Alex, you had your hand up. If you can put in the chat your question, that would be great. Um, otherwise, just please get in touch with me direct. OK, um, Emma, I think we'll leave it there. Um, thank you, everybody um, for attending this webinar and as uh, as you'll see in the chat they'll get these there'll be a link to these um on our website pretty soon so yeah please get in touch with me and uh yeah stay safe take care bye for now <laughs>